What's up guys, so welcome to the video make.com beyond the basics. Uh, so if you haven't watched the first part yet and you're just starting out with make.com, check the first video in the description. If not, let's dive in. So in this video, we're gonna use, we're gonna use things that are going to make it easy to build medium difficulty flows. So we're gonna use the iterator module, uh, the aggregator module, I was gonna learn how to aggregate text. So if you wanna have an update from your system about what's going on, it's very easy. And then also how to handle errors, right? So if you have any sort of error coming up. So I'll demonstrate these things by walking you through some example flows, building them live for you so you can follow along and uh, you know, know exactly how to use them so you can use them in your own flows as well. All right guys, so we're in my computer right now. And uh, first off, we're gonna start off with the iterator and the array aggregator. Um, so I'm just gonna explain both of these modules by giving you an example uh, where you would use them because I feel like that's the easiest way to understand it. And I think we make the most sense just start with the iterator. So for this example, what we're gonna do is we have an email we receive. And in that email, there is not one, but there's two attachments uh, to that email. And we wanna iterate through and do an action with each of these attachments. So first of all, I'll show you the email. So I just sent myself these two very funny <laughs> memes. Um, and uh, yeah, basically what I wanna do is uh, both of these, I wanna save them to my Google Drive. That'll be the first example we'll build here. So just going back to make, so we're gonna start off with the watch emails module in Gmail. So I'll just hit watch emails. And then what we can do is we can also set up a simple filter or a Gmail filter. So in this case, I'll just do a filter that says video example. So we'll be sure to, you know, get our first email and not all of my other emails. Uh, but you can set this up any, any, but you can obviously set this up anyway. Uh, this is just an easy example for now. So I'll just hit OK. Oh, we need to check a folder. So I'll just do inbox or all email. Hit OK. And then I'll do um, process all available emails according to the settings. I just, uh, yeah, to hit that email. So if we just run this module, right? So there we go. And as you can see, we get one bundle as an output, which means one email was found that matches our search term. And if you can then see here, attachment is actually an array that has two different collections. That, that then contains the data uh, for each of those images we sent ourselves. Um, so let me actually demonstrate to you why just uh, using a normal flow would not work and why we actually need the uh, iterator flow in this case. So if I just add another module and then I'll just do drive and then I'll do uh, upload a file choose my account, just have to update some permissions. So I'll select a folder from the list and I'll just do the root folder just to keep it simple. And then for file, I'll say map. Then if we click here, we can actually see the attachment and then we can see the file name and we can see the data and we hit save. Now let's run it and actually show you why this will not work. All right, so as you can see, it found the email and then it uploaded a file. Uh, remember, we had two attachments and we want both of them saved. But if we go to the Google Drive, we can already see only one of them is here, which is attachment one, which is the first one in the array uh, that's there. And that's why we need the iterator module, because if we go back to the make, uh, and we see again the attachments array. We can see we have the first one and the second one, and now it only processes the first one. Um, so basically, what, the way you want to think about the iterator module is if the data is basically 2D, so you look at spreadsheet row, uh, but then one variable, such as an attachment, has multiple values basically going 3D. That's when you want to iterate through each of these uh, to make sure you know you do all of the actions on each of those items. So let's set that up right now. So we're just gonna unlink this. We're gonna go down here to flow control and we're gonna say iterator. And as you can see, it's already pretty nicely depicted here as well. It's one input and then it basically splits them up and goes through each of the items um, to you know do the uh, actions you want with it. Um, so if I just connect the two, and then click here and I have to input the array. So the array in this case will obviously be the attachments, but as you can see, you can also see some other examples of arrays. So let's say you wanted to make a spreadsheet row for each of the 
persons that this email was sent to. Uh, that could also be uh, you know, something you can use this for. Uh, basically, any that has those brackets, it means it's an array. So it means it has multiple values uh, for the same uh, variable, so to say. So attachments, we're going to go through these. We're going to say OK. And then we're going to change our Google Drive module a little bit. Uh, so at the map level, uh, what we're going to do instead is click here on the flow control iterator, and it actually already pre-fills it. Um, but I can also just show you this way. Um, you will get the flow control iterator as a new as a new module to choose variables from. Um, and as you can see, you have the file name and you have the data there, so you can click it. But sometimes Make will make it easier for you and just you know. Uh, already map it for you so you can just click that one or you can set it up this way it has the same it has the same result so let's just press ok hit save and then we're just gonna run it again and as you can see the main difference of what happened now is that we have one uh, operation being run here then one operation being uh, put in here as an input and then it's split up not in one but in two operations in the upload file uh, module so now the two files are uploaded separately and if we go to the Google Drive we can actually see now if we just click this away and we hit refresh that attachment one is uploaded again as well as attachment two. Uh, so now we have both of the images, both of the attachments in our uh, Google Drive folder. All right, so that's the basic of an iterator. So basically if you wanna go through any sort of array and have one action be performed or multiple actions be performed for each of the items inside of the array, that's when you will use an iterator module. And uh, yeah, that's basically basically similar to like a loop you would find in Python or anything like that. Um, so yeah, that's how you use it. So what about the aggregator? What is that all about? Um, so basically if we would, for example, then add in a Slack module here. So let's say we get an email we then take the attachments, save them to Google Drive, and then we just want to send a Slack message to our sales team that we have a couple new attachments in there. Um, and let's say this email, you know, is some sort of like input or request for proposal, whatever, right? Um, and we want to notify them that there are new attachments in there. So uh, what you can do here then is say Slack, and then you would do create a message, which creates a new message. And then what I'll do here is um, just send a message in the general channel. All right, so let's run this now. So we'll find the email and we'll upload the files. And then it will send the Slack message. But as you can see, it also sent two Slack messages. So it basically sent the same message twice, which is, hey, we just got a new request for proposal, uh, which is our email, right? Like this is what we are imagining here. Um, and the attachments are in the Google Drive. Well, we obviously don't want that message to be sent for each and every attachment we get. Uh, just one will do because it's just that one email, so that one a prospective client you know we only want one notification from that and not multiple so let's set up the aggregator module to fix this problem and uh, you know only send one slack message to the sales team so very simple you just unlink this item you go to flow control you say array aggregator you hook it up just hit the magic wand here and then here you can say source module is basically where the iteration process that you then want to you know bundle back together uh, starts so in our case that's at the iterator module and then as you can see if you also click ok here it will then also nicely visualize it for you as this being kind of like a container like a loop and then it will only continue one time then in the aggregator module we can also select what kind of fields uh, we want to aggregate and uh, you know get back so let's say we do uh, google drive and then we do name uh, which is like the file name we gave it and then let's see what happens and I'll add that actually to the Slack message as one of the output variables. So we just say it's called name, and then let's see what happens. Save, and then we say run once. So it finds the email, it then starts iterating through each of the attachments, it then connects the array together, and then it sends just one Slack message to the team to notify them that the files are now inside of the Google Drive. And as you can see, it says we just got a new request for proposal the attachments are in the google drive it's called attachment one.png but as you can see there's a problem here because we have attachment one but we also have attachment two uh, so it actually didn't do it exactly the way we want it so this can work fine if we don't want to pass any variables from the loop uh, to the slack for example 
But in this case, we could actually use another module, which is kind of next up, which is called the text aggregator. So let me switch the array aggregator to a text aggregator, and then I can show you uh, how to actually send the file names correctly to your Slack. Um, so you don't always use the text aggregator, only if you want an output variable. I have a couple of variants on this as well, which I'll show you in a bit. So just going back to the flow, I'm just gonna delete the array aggregator. I'm gonna unlink this. I'm gonna go to tools and then I'm gonna choose the text aggregator. So it aggregates multiple strings into text. And as you can see, it looks familiar. So we can use the source module, which is the iterator and the text we want to aggregate will be the name. And we can hit the advanced settings and we can have a row separator. So I just want them on a new row, but you can also have tabs or anything custom. So if you want to do like a CSV file from this, you can as well. Uh, so in our case, we're just gonna do a new row. And you can actually group them by as well, uh, which is more of an advanced feature. I'm just gonna hit okay. Hit save. And as you can see, this looks very familiar to what we did before with the normal array aggregator. It now kind of looks like one unit, uh, which it is, and it will function in the same way. We just have to change in the Slack what we want to be put here, which will be the text variable, which is uh, the aggregated text we just created. Just gonna hit OK, gonna hit save. And then as you can see, it functions in the same way. So one bundle goes in, two of the attachments get uploaded to the Google Drive, then the text gets aggregated. And as you can see, the output from this is attachment one, and then a new line, attachment two. And then in the Slack, we sent the message, the attachments are in a Google Drive, it's called attachment one and attachment two, and it did exactly as we wanted. So, so that's an example flow of where you use an iterator and then an aggregator, and then also the special aggregator, which is the text aggregator. And here under the tools section, you can actually also see uh, some of the other aggregations. So you can also do a table aggregation. So get all of the values you want inside of one table, which could be useful, obviously. And then also the numeric aggregator. Um, so if you want to do the same thing as the text, but with numbers, obviously that's a nice one as well. Uh, or in flow control, you can just do the normal aggregator if you don't want to have any sort of output variable come from that little piece, from that piece that is iterating over each other. Right now, so as an addition, I also want to talk a little bit about error handling. So whenever you use any sort of integration, APIs, webhooks, which is what we're doing here. It's only just has like a fancy skin around it, but we're basically coding and having all of these apps talk to each other. It's very likely that you're gonna have uh, some sort of errors once in a while. Uh, and if you're doing something that's really important to your entire flow, you also wanna put in some sort of way to handle these errors to make sure you know your business still keeps operating, especially if these flows are important to you uh, and you don't miss anything. Um, so in this case, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add error handling here to the Google Drive uh, when we're uploading a file. Let's say that throws an error for some reason uh, that we're sure that it gets handled according to what we want uh, and it doesn't just get skipped over. Now I will say that Google Drive is very unlikely to throw errors and this is more useful when you're using like uh, custom APIs that are not integrated within Make. Um, so if you're using some sort of uh, new AI model to create images, or if you're using some app that's a little bit newer, uh, that's more likely to throw errors and it's also not integrated with Make yet. Uh, that's wh really where I want to use this. Uh, but since we're already building this flow, I'll just give an example within this flow uh, to keep things simple uh, and so that you understand the error handling part. So what you can do is just right click on any sort of module and then you can say add error handler. And as you can see, a couple of things will pop up, uh, which is break, commit, ignore, resume, and rollback. Um, so I'll just talk you through what each of them are. So the break basically means it will take a break. Um, so this is really good when you're working again with some of those external APIs, maybe you're uploading large files, very prone to throwing any sort of error or any sort of experimental thing you're doing. Uh, you might just wanna retry a little bit later on, give it some time to rest basically and then try again and that's when you would you, when you would use the break module um, so what you can basically do is just say hey number of attempts is three for example and then the interval will be 15 minutes and in this case what would happen is the automation would run maybe it would upload the first file to google drive but then it will throw an error then it will basically hibernate in this stage take a break and then try again up to three times uh, with 15 minutes in between to upload that file. If it's successful, it will continue to the next step. 
uh, and you have nothing to worry about. Uh, if it's not successful after three attempts, then it will complete the execution uh, and say, you know, this didn't work uh, and it will log it in your log. So it's a very nice way to make your automations uh, fail proof. Then another one is commit, which will basically just say, hey, you're done. Uh, so you also don't have any options here. It will just finish the flow uh, at this point. So if there's an error, it will just say, okay, done. Um, and yeah, that's really all I can say here. Then you have uh, ignore. So you could say ignore and commit are the same, but that's not true because commit, it means that it ends at the error. So it runs Gmail, it gets an error, and then it doesn't do anything else. So it doesn't send a Slack message. But with the ignore module, it will throw an error and then just continue the flow as if nothing happened. Uh, so, you know, this is in different use cases. You might want to just continue the flow um, and have everything happen as usual. If, if it's not that important of a step, you can just skip it. Uh, to be honest, I would rarely use this one. Uh, but, you know, there, there's probably some use case where you would use this, but I don't really think it's smart because those steps in the flow, usually they build on top of each other. So it's very likely that if you get an error here, then the rest of your flow won't really make sense. Uh, but again, there might be some use cases where this is handy. All right, so then we have the resume handler, uh, which to be honest, I've never used myself, but what you can do here is you can set up kind of a default, default fallback information. Um, so let's say Google Drive throws an error. We can then change the output from this field uh, to a default. So as you can see, since I linked it together, it gives all of these fields, which correspond uh, to the same fields that you have um, from this module as an output. Um, so we could just say like, hey, if this throws an error, we always just want to use this value and then just continue the flow. Um, so this can be useful. Again, I don't really have an example. I've never used this, but it can be useful, obviously, if you uh, you know, are fine with having some sort of fallback if you get an error. So the final one is the rollback. And basically what it does is if the flow throws an error, it then try and tries and reverses as much of the uh, things you already did. Uh, it's really important to note though that it doesn't, this doesn't always work. So it only works with um, you know, any sort of automation that has assets next to it, which isn't too many to be honest. So for example, here with the Gmail one, if you send an email, obviously the rollback is not gonna work, right? So yeah, again, I don't know if this is the best one to use. To be honest, I think the one you'll most likely use will be the break one, which will just retry it a couple of times, just like the most common uh, error use case uh, you would have, or it's like a timeout, or again, any sort of like experimental API you're using or any beginner kind of software that's just a little bit unstable, that's what you most likely would want to use. But any of the other things I don't think are really uh, too useful, but you know, again, it's good to note. And uh, yeah, if you have any use case, by the way, uh, make sure to comment down below. I'm, uh, I'm curious to learn uh, where you're using some of these things for. All right, guys, just finished uh, editing this video, but I forgot to shoot an outro. So I'll just do it now while wearing these nice glasses. So now you know how to handle iterators and as well as the aggregator module and do error handling. So if you find this video helpful, make sure to like, comment, subscribe, as well as check out the links in the description below if you want more of my help. And I hope to see you all in the next one.